Hello and good morning today. I've got uh, the TOG article uh, about breast cancer during pregnancy summarised for you. It's quite an important TOG article. Um, I've gone through it quite thoroughly and um, talked about all the important points that you will hopefully just need to know for your exams. Um, so stay tuned and if you like this video then don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. So first things first, the incidence of uh, breast cancer in pregnancy is about one in 3000. Um, breast cancer seems to be the most common cancer associated with pregnancy. 10% of women with breast cancer are under the age of 40 um, and are pregnant at diagnosis. Um, pregnancy associated breast cancer um, it can be diagnosed uh, during pregnancy or up to one year postpartum. Um, pregnancy increases risk of breast cancer, especially in carriers of BRCA1 and BRCA2 mutation. Most invasive breast cancers are classified as um, invasive ductal carcinomas, uh, not otherwise specified. So that's the whole name of the of the cancer type. So it's called invasive ductal carcinoma, um, not otherwise specified. Axillary lymph node involvement uh, is is present in two thirds of pregnant women with breast cancer. So what are the differentials of a breast lump in pregnancy? As you all, uh, I'm sure, have come across a scenario where uh, you get called to see a patient who has either just delivered or is pregnant and have got a breast lump and you need to examine and find out what's going on. So the differentials include invasive carcinoma, lactating adenoma, fibroadenoma, cystic uh, disease, uh, lobular hyperplasia, milk retention, cyst, abscess, lipo, um, hematoma and rarely leukemia, uh, lymphoma, sarcoma, neuroma and tuberculosis. So mammography uh, is high, it has a high false negative rate during pregnancy of 25%, um, also exposes fetus to radiations which are quite minimal um, so it's considered safe. So the gold standard for diagnosis is a core needle or excisional biopsy. In breastfeeding patients, um, you want to suppress lactation with carbagaline, which will reduce the risk of milk fistula or abscess formation. Fine needle aspiration has good sensitivity, but carries a high risk of false positive uh, results during lactation and pregnancy. So this is quite a helpful flowchart as it goes through management of breast cancer in different trimesters and according to the stage of cancer during pregnancy. So um, diagnosis of breast cancer in pregnancy, um, then you have, if you have early stage disease, um, that's stage one and two, um, and it's the first trimester, um, then you recommend um, modified radical uh, mastectomy plus chemotherapy after 14 weeks of gestation. Um, if it's early stage but it's second trimester then modify radical mastectomy plus chemotherapy but if it's third trimester the third trimester is is divided into two so it's if it's if, if the women's between 28 to 32 weeks um, then it's advisable for modified radical mastectomy plus chemotherapy um, however it, or either breast um, conserve, conserving surgery plus radiotherapy plus chemotherapy after delivery. Um, but if the if the if the if the stage of pregnancy is after 32 weeks, delivery by 34 weeks is recommended, followed by surgery plus chemotherapy plus or minus radiotherapy plus or minus hormonal therapy. If it is a late stage of cancer and it's the first trimester, then consider termination of pregnancy. Following that, uh, radiotherapy plus or minus chemotherapy plus or minus hormonal therapy um, plus or minus palliative surgery. If um, there is, it's a first trimester, uh, then delay treatment until the second trimester if the patient doesn't want to consider termination of pregnancy. So if it's a second trimester, then consider prim primary systemic um, surgery 
um, therapy plus or minus palliative surgery. Um, if it's uh, after 28 weeks, um, then consider delivery. Uh, and then after that, radiotherapy plus or minus chemotherapy plus or minus hormonal therapy um, plus or minus palliative surgery. Um, so that's quite a comprehensive um, summary of the entire article um, as to how to manage um, the, the, you know, breast cancer in pregnancy, um, showing it by different trimesters. So for hormonal therapy, um, tamoxifen is a non steroidal oestrogen with both agonist and antagonist activity. Um, for premenopausal, um, oestrogen receptor positive and for palliative treatment of uh, metastatic disease. So for chemotherapy, uh, pregnancy associated breast cancer is usually associated with invasive and high grade lesions, making chemotherapy quite necessary. Chemotherapy reduces recurrence of breast cancer by 37% and death by 27%. Chemotherapy is considered to be safe when used during second and third trimester of pregnancy. Nausea and vomiting associated with uh, chemotherapy can be treated with um, 5-HT3 uh, serotonin antagonist or steroids, especially during the second and the third trimester of pregnancy. Chemotherapy uh, can lead to preterm -pre delivery, low birth weight, transient tachypnea of the newborn and transient neonatal leukopenia. Adverse fetal effects of chemotherapy agents and, in, and used in the management of breast cancer. So this table goes through the different agents, what kind of mechanism of action they have and then the adverse um, fetal effects. So this is quite a, a useful table. Uh, however, I do think that for your MRCOG part two, uh, you will hopefully not need to know this in too much detail. So it's a four to six month course uh, in node positive or node negative uh, women with who have a tumor larger than one centimeter. Um, systemic chemo is the first choice in women presenting with stage four breast cancer. Uh, and this is normally started after the first trimester. It's contraindicated during the first trimester of the pregnancy uh, as all the major organs are, uh, are developing at that stage. Um, however, chemo can be considered after 14 weeks of gestation. Um, and, and the treatment uh, regime that's used is cyclophosphamide, uh, doxorubicin and fluoro uh, uracil um, is a recommended combination of drugs used in adjuvant chemo uh, therapy regime. So timing of chemotherapy is crucial. Delay of three weeks following surgery can have significant impact on prognosis. Um, the, the efficacy beyond eight weeks is unknown. The period uh, 10 days between 10 days and eight weeks after conception is the most vulnerable. Um, the risk of fetal damage is the greatest during this period and the use of cytotoxic agents during this time is associated with 17% risk of fetal malformation and spontaneous abortion. Radiotherapy is not recommended during first trimester of pregnancy, uh, as we know why, because it involves radiation and is harmful to the baby. Radiation exposes the fetus to um, the radiation exposure can be minimized using precise radiation um, techniques, uh, appropriate shielding of the abdomen and by substituting whole um, breast therapy with partial breast treatment. Uh, radiotherapy is, it can cause miscarriages, uh, teratogenicity, microcephaly, fetal growth restriction, learning difficulties, induction of childhood malignancies and hematological disorders. There's no evidence uh, that uh, women need additional antenatal care because of pregnancy associated breast cancer. Standard practice is to establish fetal well-being using ultrasound monitoring while chemotherapy is being administered. Approximately 40% of babies can have low birth weight. Delivery between 32 and 34 weeks uh, is, is recommended or extended chemotherapy during the last month of gestation. So uh, the recommendation is to wait at least two years after treatment before uh, conception. Um, so this is talking about advice to get pregnant 
uh, after breast cancer, the five-year survival rate is 40 to 73 percent. Advanced stage, but stage four cancer is adv um, the, the advice is against subsequent pregnancy as their five-year survival rate is only 15 percent. Women with uh, stage three disease are advised to wait at least five years. Those women re with recurrent stage one or two disease are also advised against future pregnancy in view of um, the intensity of of um, further treatments that's required and the poor prognosis of the disease. Well, thank you so much for listening. I hope you found this video useful. And if you did, then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Um, I will be um, continuing to go through different TOG articles. But if there's anything specific that you'd like me to cover, I'm more than happy to summarise that for you in order to help with your exam revision. Good luck revising.